Hello and welcome to the seventh part of the series and in this tutorial we're going to be learning how to set up our account settings page. So let me show you a quick demo of that. So you can access the account settings from here. So if you were to click on here and here we go. So we have, so basically this is um, quite self-explanatory. You can set up, change the account settings. Uh, so let's say I'm going to change my first name, last name here. And I'm going to leave the email as is and the contact as well. Actually, just leave, change that as well. There we go. Awesome. Uh, let's say I want to also change my password as well. Now, we're also going to learn how to make sure that if all the fields are empty, then we're not going to allow the user to be able to send the form because we always have constant uh, form validation check in place. But yeah, that's, uh, that's what we're going to be covering for this lesson today. So let's jump over to Xano. Now for this specifically, we are going to be focusing on this request here, which is the user's user's UID. So if we click into this, <clears throat> Now we're using a put request. Ideally, a patch request would have been nice, uh, nicer, but at the time of making this, uh, Xano Wizd does not support a patch request, which is why we're working with a put request. Uh, we have all our inputs here that is relevant to our uh, form that we've just seen. Uh, I'm not gonna go through this. Uh, this is quite self-explanatory and now let's jump into our function stack. Uh, you'll notice that we have two conditionals here. And so one conditional being that the password being empty, well, not empty and the password being empty because, uh, you know, sometimes you might want to change a certain thing on your account uh, and that, you know, your password might be empty and sometimes, you know, your password might be filled in. And secondly, the reason why we have this conditional set up is because if I show you the edit record here, so you'll notice that we are using the first not empty filter. Um, now I've kind of explained why we're using a first not empty filter here for all our fields. And I've uh, so that explanation is available in episode five. So I'm not going to repeat that. Uh, the main issue, however, is that this filter does not work with the password field. So, which is why we had to create this conditional field to as, as a workaround. So yeah, apart from that, everything else stays the same. Um, so let's see what we have. So let's say that you have filled the password in. The first thing that we do is try to get our record from the user's database based on the UID. And then we edit the, rec uh, the record based on whatever fields that you've actually edited. And then once after that, we update our variable and we want to, we update the variable of full name. And that's the reason why is because we want to return our full name in the response. Like you'll notice that in the example here, I've changed my full first name and my last name. And you'll notice that the, this updated almost immediately. So if I were to head back into our dashboard, so my first name has changed as well over here. So that's great. So yeah, um, when this request is successfully executed, um, we want the response to return back the first, the, the full name and the first name and the last name as well. So yeah, uh, that is that for this request here. Now let's jump over to WISD and start setting things up. Um, also, I'm currently on the account settings page and I've went ahead and I've already created the request for the update account details. So again, uh, if you've been following the series this whole time, you'll notice that the setup is almost similar to how we've been setting all our requests up so far. So, but yeah, if you have any queries, please let the, uh, let me know in the comments and I'll get to those as soon as possible. So let's start off with our first action and that is our validate user. So let's do that. We want to validate the user who enters this page so we wanna make sure that this user is logged in when entering this page. And if they're not, 
then we're going to boot them over to the uh, login page. Okay, so this is going to be an event and we're going to apply a custom condition, uh, the custom condition being that the user is on the page dashboard account settings. So yeah, we want to make sure that this uh, validate user only fires off then. And then once that is met, we want to uh, navigate the user to the login page. Okay. And we're also going to add a condition. So return the condition being that the token is null. There we go. So I think I might need to reload the page. All right, let's head over to account settings now. Okay, so that's it. That's that's the one for validate user. Now, second is we want to set the visibility for our loading wrapper. So let's do that. Set visibility to loading wrapper. And this is going to be an event based action as well. We're going to run a function, uh, check, uncheck this. And we're going to jump over here, copy this. So I'm not going to going to run through this because this is something that has already been previously covered. Uh, so now at this point on, you know, I'm just going to apply all this. These are just stuff that we've already previously worked on. Okay, so let's try reloading the page and see if that works. Perfect, it's working. Okay, so now let's start um, inputting all our details into the form. So starting off with the set first name. So uh, this is going to be an element based action. And if I switch the x-ray on, update first name. So we wanna target that. And for the setting, we are going to do set input value and with the value being return. So another thing that I pointed, forgot to point out is that if you remember correctly, uh, we have this request on our account page, but we also have another request, which is the uh, get, so get account details. So we have this um, request being triggered as well. So this request is being triggered. So just letting you know, that's because this is relevant to this action right here. So we're going to grab our first name from this request. That is if I can find the request. Ah, there it is. There we go, that is done. And let's duplicate that and let's set our last name as well. Okay, let's duplicate that one more time. Let's set up our email. Okay, let's set up our contact number this time. Okay, so that's that for our form setup. Now, what we want to do is we want to 
create the action called update account. This is also going to be based on an element. Update account details. And we're going to run a custom function. So we're going to jump over to Notion here. And there we go. Again, we're using the same code that we have used for all other all our requests as well. So let's go ahead and paste that in. Okay, now before I test that out, I'm just going to attach our other stuff as well. So let's duplicate this um, and call this set success or error wrapper. So this is going to be the same as well. We're going to run function. Sorry, this is going to be an event base attribute present update account details. And let's run the function. Let's copy that. Perfect. Although another thing that I've realized is that for the update account, I've used an element where as I shouldn't have done that. So what I'm going to do is copy this code, change that to an event. Uh, attribute present. And then we're going to run a function, paste that in and that's done. So let's duplicate this again. And we're going to call this uh, set visibility to update account loader. So this is for the loader right here. Uh, let's switch the x-ray on update account loader. Actually, we don't need this anymore. Um, Sorry, I needed to change this. Update account loader, set visibility, return. And we want to do this when update account details is requesting. Perfect, so let's reload this entire page. And what I'm gonna do as a first test, I'm going to erase everything just to make sure that we can't submit this form. So I'm currently clicking on the button. And as you can see, you know, um, our account details isn't being updated. So I'm just going to reload the page again. And this time, I'm going to change my password to demo123. And also change it to my actual name here. So it should update the entire UI once the changes have been applied. Perfect. So as you can see, the name has been changed here and we got the success banner. That brings us to the end of this tutorial. Hopefully that wasn't too hard and I will catch you on the next one.